So today I'm going to take you through painting my face and you can apply this to any painting of a face or a pet. Let's get started. All right, this is going to be a longer than usual video by me and if you don't like to watch longer videos and you're watching this on YouTube, you can touch your screen and three dots will appear on the upper right hand side and then you can either speed this up or slow it down. I can't imagine why you would want to slow it down. This is working two times as fast as I usually work. And I should also say at some point there might be some dogs barking which will break my heart. I'm going to try my best not to have that happen. So the drawing is all done and I want you to be under no illusions. I am not a good drawer. This was done with a projector. I mean I can draw okay. But, uh, but this was projected, and just know that that's an option, and many professional artists use that option. And, you know, you can have a separate discussion, and there have been on my channel about whether that's cheating or not. You know, uh, for me, the, the way to get to the end of the painting is the way to get to the end of the painting, and I'm not going to get hung up with uh, the drawing of the thing. So that's how I got this far. Now I'm putting in my darkest darks. Now people always ask, what colors do you use for... Uh, flesh tones, what colors do you use for faces, and to which I answer all of them. I use all the colors. But I would say predominantly in my dark here, I'm using three colors. It's Alizarin Red and um, Naples, no, Alizarin Red, Ultramarine Blue, and a little bit of, of Burnt Sienna. That's kind of where, that's the triad that I go to for my darks. Once those darks are established, now I know everything else is either going to be mid-toned or white. And I don't use any white out. I know sometimes I do, but almost, I would say almost never, because I don't like how it looks when you take it up. Uh, you know, I mean, remove it. So now I'm getting into, I guess, what you would call uh, skin tones. And I'm a, I'm a very pale person. So this would be alizarin uh, red again, alizarin, yeah, alizarin red again, and then um, probably a bit, a little bit of uh, Naples yellow in it. And I might have even tipped a little bit in the oranges. I'm not sure. What I'm really trying to do here is use as few strokes as possible. The brush that I'm using is a number 16 flat. And I'm trying to put in the value shapes that I see. And I know that once I have my darks in, I sort of squint. And now any color that I put in that isn't as dark as my darkest darks is going to read as lighter. And so that's what I'm trying to do here. Everything is just relative to what I did before. So, so far the darks are in. Now I'm looking at some places which appear even a little bit lighter. So I've had a little bit of orange to that mix. I'm constantly mixing as I go. I don't make one, I don't make piles of paint and then draw from them. I mix as I go. So the head is starting to have some form to it. We've got the, like I said, we've got the darks, we've got the mid -tone, some of the mid-tones. I need to get some more in. Remember, I need to keep the whites of the paper white. So the whites of the paper are remaining. And um, I've noticed I, I, I used to in the past always put color dabs on the upper left because I wanted to keep track of what were my darks, what were my mediums, and what were my lights. I don't do that anymore. And I'm sorry, for demonstration purposes, it would be a good thing to do. But at this point, I can really tell just by eyeballing. So now I've added a little bit of orange into some of my mixes because I can see that the next shapes are even lighter. So the point here is find your darkest shapes, put them in. Find the next darkest shapes, put them in. Find the next dark, darkest shapes, and you know, go the opposite way. So you're always working lighter, 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 lighter. Yeah. And that's how, that's how I'm making the forms of this head. I'm not looking, I think the important thing to remember here is I'm not looking at individual features. It's not about the eyes, the nose, the mouth, the chin. None of these things are seen as things for me. They're just seen as shapes. And, you know, just like I talked about in a previous video with false endings, false beginnings, none of these shapes really end or begin. So it's really important to make sure that they're, um, that, that things don't look like they're separated, you know, have them join each other. So it's, uh, you know, I, I paint over. It's not like coloring. It's not like um, finding a shape and not, not letting it touch the shape next to it. It's very much about um, letting things meet on the paper. And that might not result in a perfect wash or, you know, the perfect application of paint, but that's okay with me because, you know, I'm not a photorealist. And my, my goal here is not to make this look like a photorealist painting. My goal is to make it look like a painting. My goals are to simplify shapes as much as possible 
and also use as few colors as possible. You know, take the whole thing of painting and, and simplify it. Now, now this is different. Suddenly I've gotten into a lot of cerulean blue. I decided that cerulean blue is going to kind of be my, probably my darkest dark. So everything is going to get keyed off that. Now I could have made my hair um, black or gray, which is sort of how it appears in the photograph. But, you know, I find if you have neutrals, um, that you know, gray is a neutral, um, to put as much color in a neutral as it's possible to put. So I can, um, uh, what do you call it, um, put cerulean blue in places where I would normally put a dark gray. And that's what I would call a color swap out or a substitution. And it just adds to the painterly look of, of, of work. And when I see other people do it, you know, it, it excites me. So I want to see if I can do it too. So, so far, um, things are looking pretty good. Um, let's see. Okay, it seems to be it's time to start on, the, um, on what I'm wearing. Now, again, I'm keying on what's dark. So I'm making this dark, which is a Viridian, blue, a Viridian green, probably a little bit of ultramarine blue. There's something else in there. Oh, I know what I did. I added some uh, alizarin red into that as well because remember there's so much alizarin going on in my skin that um, that in order for things to look um, integrated it's really nice to have that in the mix you know anytime you're able to incorporate colors you've already used into the next mix that you have your, your painting overall is just going to look more coordinated once you start thinking about that concept you start seeing it in a lot of paintings and, and you'll realize every once in a while you'll see a painting where somebody at the very end decided, for example, to use a completely different blue for the sky than they've used anywhere else in the painting. And you, you're not, you don't know why you're unsettled. You just suddenly feel unsettled. And, and that's the reason why. It's a little bit like building a building. All of these things that I'm putting in are based on decisions that I made ahead of time. Those eyebrows, although they're kind of reddish, they're slightly darker but not as dark as anything I've put in so far, and there's a little bit of cerulean blue in them as well. So you see, that's why it's so hard to answer the question of what colors do you use for uh, face, tone, face tones, yeah, because um, it all depends on, it really depends from the very first stroke what picture, what color I choose. If I had chosen um, different darks, let's say I decided to go darker, let's say I had done a Prussian blue, which is a really dark blue, and burnt sienna or burnt umber, and then used alizarin crimson as well, uh, then everything would be keyed on how dark that is, which would be considerably darker than what I chose, because I use cerulean blue as my darkest blue for the most part. Occasionally, there's some ultramarine blue in there, but not very much. So you, it, it's almost impossible to answer the question, because it depends on where you start. Everything is going to key from where you start and every decision you make from, from then on. And I'm not sure that I consciously know why I decided to go with um, with uh, cerulean blue to begin with, but I suspect it has something to do with the fact that um, I like I like high key. High key meaning um, I, I prefer my darks not to be um, as dark as black because I, I find when things become that dark, not that I don't do it, um, I would, and I'll certainly probably do it near the end in a couple of places, but um, there's a harshness. There's a real harshness when you get all the way from uh, your whitest white down to your darkest dark. Let's say it's um, if your whitest white is one and your darkest dark is a 10, uh, that's a long stretch. Um, I admire painters who can do that and make it look integrated, but but I don't think I do that very well. I think I think it tends to um, I tend to overpaint and things become darker than I want them to be. All right, so there's there's the um, pretty much we're at the end of the painting. That wasn't you know that's about as simple as it can be. But the point is to um, to look at shapes, find your darks, put in the shapes, find your next lights, put in the shapes. Find your and just keep going up the scale from darks to lights and don't make judgments along the way because eventually it's going to pull together and be uh, what you want it to represent and in this case it's my face so remember to keep the whites of your paper white your paints wet please join my youtube channel and i'll see you next time bye bye